<laughs> oh, we're live. It's episode 138 of the Whole Back Rack podcast. Shane's here. Junior's here. Oh, Ooh. it's happening again. <laughs> he's here in the back and he's here. Let's do our member shout outs. All right. So Shane's here. Uh, he'll do his own sponsor spot. After I'm done. Bravo Zubal Python. She had a good Tinley. She was going to be here tonight, but she has a, a family thing that happened. She's making her proven mail pastel puzzle available. If anybody's interested, please send her a message. It's not on Morph Market yet. You got a message. Uh, Stone Age Ball Pythons. He'll be at the Pact Wars as well as Andrew Powerhouse Pythons at the end of April. Junior, are you going to Pact Wars in April? April? Um, the Hillsborough Hill Show? Yeah, kind of. Um, I accidentally double booked a reptile show. Um, and uh, yeah, I can't be in two places at one time. So I'm going to have my one friend to vend to one show for me. Like my best friend, Andrew from SG Reptiles, he's going to probably go to Hillsboro for me. Him and his girlfriend are going to vend that show. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Phoenix. Is Phoenix a, a good market for hogs? I don't even know. Any place is a good market for hogs. All right. <laughs> I'm also going to Billings, Montana. Billings, Montana is pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Great market for hog nose. Just All as right. long as there's some people in the area, somebody will buy a hog nose. That's so, awesome. So, Jeff, is there a reason why you chose to go to Phoenix over Packing Wars? Um, yeah, because my friend Andrew is, um, you know, he's gonna do he's gonna do Hillsboro, and the thing is, Phoenix is a little more congested. Um, it's kind of also a shittier city, kind of like there's probably a little more like, oh, I shouldn't say that. I got, I like the Phoenix area, but like some parts of the area, like Phoenix is a little rough that I was in at least. Uh, Phoenix is kind of like a big metropolis. It's actually impressively large. Um, it's also really hot and it's going to be very hot there in April. So, you know, and it's the show is like a little smaller and the aisleways are a little more congested. So it's actually a little more uncomfortable show to do. And there's more people there. I feel like, and Hillsboro is a more laid back show. So I'd rather take the show. That's going to be a little, you know, not as comfortable and give him the comfortable show. If I had to choose the, uh, the enjoyable show, I would have went to Hillsboro, but I'm going to go Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Anywhere right. out West where it's hot, you're going to have a, uh shady characters like, like, <laughs> and i could say that because i'm from there so you know, yeah not, yeah yeah it's kind of like it's kind of like vegas that area it's a little bit like vegas yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. all right a couple more sponsor spots gray family snakes they have two clutches of the incubator and a few more gravid girls so check them out for all of your bpi dg exanthic pie ball python needs and chris at bns reptilia he's got longicata gravid costa rican i think we're gravid and probably a million pitch wolfus, probably some ball pythons too, but they're boring. Um, Chris, BNS Reptilia, thank you for sponsoring. All right, let's get into it. Whew. So, what was the vibe check of Tinley? I heard it was like pretty, pretty good vibes. Well, either of you can start. What do you think, Shane? Uh, the vibe over there where I was at was great, man. I had uh, a lot of people coming to talk and look around and. Overall, I, I had a sense of happiness, and everyone seemed excited. Yeah, yeah. It's a, is one quite. Where is Dave? Wasn't Dave supposed to be here? <laughs> His stomach hurts. I heard. Come hey. on, there ain't no fucking way. <laughs> this guy was supposed to like. Remember the last time I was here? That's what she, I'm glad she didn't even say. Because what's going on with that podcast you and Dave were doing? I was like, you know, I can sometimes I fall behind on certain stuff I want to do, but like I was like, come on, Dave. And did you call Dave a fizzle at the show? You call yeah. him a fizzle? Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah, he's trying to get as many people as possible. I mean, I kind of dropped the ball. I meant to get more people to go up to him and call him a fizzle. So then he'll probably <laughs> so then just get his brain thing. Like, why everybody keep calling me a fizzle? Because that's like not a typical um, like uh, thing insult. to be thrown out. Yeah, it's not an yeah. insult. Not a common insult. And it's kind of what it's a it's a perplexing insult because it's like, is it even insulting? It's right. like, what the hell does it even mean? But yeah, so anyway, um, maybe that podcast will happen one day. But he can't make it to this one. He didn't even have to do anything. He just had to get on his phone. And you can do it. It's like my stomach could be so I haven't slept in twenty five hours. I'm all I, I feel all fucked up. I was about Damn. to do I, was, I, I actually had to stop a, a shipment because I was like pretty much done with it. And the guy's like, Oh man, he's like, I can't get the PayPal work. Can you send an invoice? I'm like, 
how is that going to help? So I say that send a PayPal invoice. And he goes, man, something's wrong with my PayPal. And it's a leopard gecko deal. So I should have known I was fucked right when it was a leopard gecko deal. And so I was like, <laughs> screw this. I was like, I mean, my mom's helping me. She, my mom works for me. And she knows I'm in a bad mood today. I'm doing taxes and shit. So I'm getting fucked everywhere. I was like, just take these other two hoggos up. I was like, fuck the leopard gecko. I'm going to have to unpack them now. So. Oh, man. <laughs> So you went through all that and Dave, I guess he was sick or something this morning. And I'm like, okay, I just wanted no, him to like not. hang out. Okay. He's not sick. <laughs> and I think he sent me a fucking thing on Facebook of like those fucking sawfish all sick in Florida. Unless that's what he's trying to convey. That's how sick he is. But he's sending me his stuff on Facebook. He could just go like this with his phone. I've seen Dave in all kinds of dire situations. There's something else. He's 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 fizzling out again. I don't know. It's fucking crazy. All right, well, maybe he'll show up since he heard you you fizzling him all over the internet just now. Yeah, maybe he's watching. If he's watching, is like all you gotta do is click Streamyard in your fucking link, and then you're there. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Yeah, I wanted to wear your shirt, by the way, Shane, but I can't find it now. It's somewhere. Because I was almost running late. I'm going through all my boxes. And I'm like, not this. I was like, the leopard gecko shipment, this. So now I'm wearing just this Chevrolet shirt that I got for three bucks at Kohl's. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the vibes were good and positive. How do we feel about, like, were the customers buying high-end stuff, low-end stuff? Was it, like, a normal show? Like, Junior, you're more... Uh, Wait, wait, wait. Let, let's uh let's set the stage here though. So we're we're getting uh results from a lower end ball python breeder and like the top dog in the hog nose world. All right, now go. All right, go. <laughs> um yeah, uh, this show I didn't sell as much high end as I probably typically would. I mean, there's there was some others like one guy he was about to buy a pretty expensive hog nose and we were like fully agreed on it. And I'm like, all right. Are you an Illinois resident? He's like, yeah. I'm like, can I see your permit? He's like, you need a permit? I'm like, one of those guys. I'm like, good. And But now he actually contacted me. He's getting the permit. I turned away so many. This is the most people I've ever turned away at a show because they had expired permits. And then the mm -hmm. one guy zoomed in on it, and he's like, here's my permit. And I knew right away. I'm like, he kind of zoomed it, so it's kind of out of the corner. So I take his phone, and I expand it. I'm like, it expired last year. And so that made it a little tough by me doing things legitimately because I'm paranoid the DNR are there are watching you because they do that shit. So uh, anyway, um, the, the sales were pretty good. But, you know, I didn't sell as much high end. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times that stuff's pre-ordered. Uh, you know, sales were still pretty good. I thought they were kind of slow. But then I added everything up and I'm like, oh, this is actually a good Tinley. Um, you know, I've been doing that show though for this past October was my 20th year in a row doing it. I started doing that show with my dad when I was 16, when it was pretty much just me primarily while well, we were doing a lot of geckos, breeding geckos together. My dad was just starting to get into corn snakes. And I, of course, had my hog nose. But even back then, there was like all kinds of stuff like, like you know, hearing about somebody that had hog nose confiscated there. So the first years I was going there, I wasn't even taking hog nose. I don't even think it was till the Maybe eighth year I actually was doing that show. Eighth or ninth year I started taking hog nose to Tinley. Um, but Tinley's kind of progressively gotten better. And I'd say recently, I wouldn't say it's leveled off, but, you know, they do a really good job of advertising it and stuff. And then you got a lot of, like, you know, um, popular, you know, YouTube personalities and reptile mm -hmm. breeders and reptile enthusiasts there. So I think you get kind of like a standard crowd. So the shows are always just pretty good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's also an expensive show to do, but I mean, it, it's, it, it, it was good. I'd say the mid range and low end though, were, were selling pretty good. Is it your best show or do, is that like random sometimes? It's random sometimes. Um, you know, I, I am from, you know, a familiar face there for most people. I've had had some people say, were you, or they, you were, uh, they were like, man, if you go to Tinley, I'd like to see you there. I was at last Tinley. I didn't see any hog nose hardly. And I'm like, I'm at every Tinley. And like, I didn't see you. I'm like, I'm the first tables on the right. So sometimes <laughs> that can happen. Sometimes, you know, hidden in plain sight. It's happened to me. You know, I'm looking for something and it's like, ends up being right in front of you the whole time. It's like, ah, mm -hmm. shit. 
Um, so yeah, it's one of my better shows. Uh, but for the longest time, though, Tinley was like my only expo. Uh, I did a lot of shows with my dad for a long time. And then when we stopped breeding geckos together, I still continued to do shows. And then by my, like my mid twenties, I kind of cut it back to just doing Daytona, Tinley, some local shows and like Hamburg. And then by my late twenties, I cut it back. And then after COVID, um, you know, I started doing more shows again. So I've really only been at like, going to trying to do a lot of show circuits in the past two three years i'd say pomona's another uh, another really good one as far as like best shows pomona's definitely up there since your experience how do you think tinley has changed over the last 20 years like i'm assuming like species composition but is there anything else that like stands out uh yeah a lot um they kept expanding it as much as they could because they had wall dividers up and they would probably they'd run out probably the other part of the you know they'd make um their own like it's not like customized but it kind of is you know because they have you can see where there's these um it looks like big accordion walls that pull out and um <clears throat> so the shows weren't as big and then for the first like 10 years they didn't have a march show it was only october mm -hmm. and they started doing march and i remember we actually got front tables at March too. And it's a funny story on how we got those front tables. Um, my dad just was like, let's ask for them basically. Well, he pretty much did at that point. Cause you know, I was more, uh, not like assertive being like a 16 year old or 15 year old at the time, or, you know, asking for tables and shit. So anyway, um, the first March show we did, we were kind of like right at the front too. And I remember so many people walked in and they were like, what? They're like, this show's, uh, because the show was half the size, but you couldn't tell until you walked in really. Cause, uh, the March show at first, um, <clears throat> it was like, I don't know. I'd say it was at least half the size. Um, maybe even been one third the size. Um, and it was just like more of like block shaped. And, uh, you know, as the ball kept, you know, going with Tinley and Tinley being known as like the expo to go to. And then kind of at some point replacing Daytona um, in, in a sense as the, you know, biggest, you know, reptile. Hold on. Reject that call. Uh, is the biggest like reptile expo in the United States. Uh, you know, then they said that they started opening up the walls and expanding, expanding it more. And now it's like, you know, to full maximum capacity. You could tell that they would like to expand it more, but there's really no more room unless they start doing the mini conference rooms. Um, you know, which I think that would be a good idea, but just give those people tables like half off because they're not in a great location. Mm -hmm. Uh, but so yeah, I mean, it's been growing, and expanding, and then, um, pet tubers like uh, Catalia and like, um, Dave Kaufman and, of course, uh, you know, Emily and Ed from Snake Discovery. And it kind of being this big fun event, it brings a lot of people to the show. So, and it's kind of like a hub, kind of like Daytona is, where it's like a meetup for a lot of breeders and everything. So, that's a, it's a lot of, like, community there. It's a good show. Um, I'd say it's definitely, if you're going to go check out reptile shows, you know, it's a, definitely a must see in a lifetime like if say if you live in california and you do pomona you should definitely at least see tinley at least once and uh maybe the october the october shows a little better so so even my sales are better in october october gets more people it's because i think it's because it's the original you know date although i don't really maybe it doesn't have anything to do with it because it's been so long who the fuck even really remembers <laughs> so <clears throat> Your Tinley, this last Tinley, wasn't your greatest then? It wasn't my greatest, no. Yeah, same, no, same um, as mine. My, my sample size is way smaller than yours, but out of the Tinleys I have vended, it was like the least. But I didn't lose money, so I still made money, so I'm not going to complain. But it seemed yeah, to me, it, it seemed to me like uh, the stuff I had on my table, they were buying like mid and down. I didn't sell. Usually I always have like one three to five thousand like a, a higher end sell one but i didn't get any of those this time 
Yeah. But there's a gazillion a ball pythons. So that is true. There is a lot of that. Um, yeah, I didn't sell because normally I, I sell some pretty high end hognos too. This time around, I I didn't. But the one thing is, a lot of people like if they wanted it, they you know you can buy it online, and that's where mm -hmm. a lot of these higher end sales kind of you know sometimes occur. But you know, I took some Lucy's out, and um, you know, for people to see, and I, I did sell a pair of Het Lucy's. Uh, so did yeah, you the, take Swiss chocolates or they... I didn't take any Swiss chocolates? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't take any. Everybody would be like, can I see him? And I'd be like, here's a cup. And, you know, <laughs> and I'd be like, I was wait till I have a little more, like maybe this season. And when I have some like good examples and was there actual for sale, they're like, you have one? And I'd be like, yeah, and it's available. Uh, well, actually, I mean, I have one some available now, but they're like these uh, lighter phase ones that they might be Arctic. I don't know. They're, they're oddball looking guys. And I got like two of those. But, you know, I was like, I'm just going to, if somebody wanted one, they probably would have reached out. I would have been very surprised if somebody was like, hey, do you have one of those nearly $10,000 Swiss chocolate mails? And I'd like, fresh out. And if I had the money right here, I'm not going to buy one from you now. Um, I'm going to go buy it somewhere else online. And I'd be like, yeah, shit. Sorry, man. You just lost yourself a sale there, dude. I'm like, yeah. You know, well, well, what, how much credence do you put into like, you should be showing off the the really high end stuff knowing you're not going to get a sale but putting it at some sort of biosecurity risk versus just taking the some of the stuff you think could sell and not yeah where do um, you well, fall in that debate yeah i mean like if somebody really wants to hold snakes like they have to you know wear gloves um there were like you know like when i went to piala uh, i had this big purple extreme red albino male that's a really really nice um snake he's just a really big dude i don't really handle him that much but He's just a hog nose. Um, this is a good hog nose. So he handles very well. And so I took him to the show and I was handling him. Um, and I really, really wouldn't let anybody else handle him. But, um, you know, I'd have people wear gloves when handling him. But I was handling him with like out gloves, you know, just as long as you wash your hands really, really well, you know, that's fine. Generally, when I'm working on stuff, to, I'm not going to do that unless like I'm assist feeding. But then when it comes to reptile shows, like if I'm like washing my hands a lot and stuff, like, yeah, I'll, you know, maybe to, like, I'll pick out a couple of hog nose, um, you know, like for a video or stuff. Cause I did a video with um, Chad Brown. And, um, but yeah, Jay, if, like, there, I bring a box of gloves with me. So if somebody's like, hey, can I hold this snake? Um, you know, I, I'll let them. Luckily, most people are pretty okay and understanding why the glove procedure is necessary. And then a lot of people are too. Like, I always ask, have you been handling other animals today? And they're like, yeah. I guys held some hog nose at that person's booth. And I'm like, they've held other colubrids. I'm like, yeah, I don't really want you to even touch my stuff. And when I get to back home from shows, <laughs> this is what I do. So I use one hand. We open up. Usually, sometimes I'll have Leslie help me. I'll open up the cup. And then that hand, I take this hand and I grab the snake. And I put it in the enclosure. And then my left hand's for touching it outside of the cups because other people are touching outside the cups. But the likelihood of anything getting transmitted that way, even if they were handling something that was sick, is extremely low. It has a hard time, um, you know, going from surface to surface. Uh, when I did leopard geckos, I'd have people, you know, wash their hands with rubbing alcohol, which doesn't kill cryptosporidium osis. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the osis and cryptosporidium doesn't like rubbing alcohol, but it certainly isn't going to kill it. And anyway, I let probably hundreds of people handle leopard geckos, and they'd go back into a particular rack, and none of those animals ever got sick. So to, the, the, you'd almost have to purposely do it. Somebody would have to be handling like a really sick gecko. But although I did see some geckos at that show um, that had cryptosis, you could tell in their tail because they had that little withered look and you could tell it wasn't from dehydration. You could tell mm -hmm. it was, um, you know, sometimes you can't tell by physically looking at them. Sometimes, you know, you can. So. Yeah. I mean, it's still scary. Worth using gloves because it's yes. cheap to use gloves. Sure. I, just spray, I just spray everyone's hands down with 13% uh, peroxide. And you can handle this, <laughs> then you can handle yeah. my snake. All right. Yeah, that'd be good. That would, uh, yeah, their, their hands would turn nice and white. They'd be very prickly feeling for a while. <laughs> Ron St. Pierre, uh, Lisa says that Ron St. Pierre said it was his fifth best show. That's a very specific number. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he must have a ledger or something because that's right. specific. <laughs> What was he selling though this time? Anoles or emeralds or or what? Did you get to like walk around and see other vendors? Did you think someone's display was 
cool or any sort of highlights you want to mention? Yeah, House of Spoods. Um, she was actually on the other side of me, but she has all these like really intricate, customized um, little enclosures for jumping spiders. And I don't know how many variations she has. Some of them almost look like little McDonald's toys with like purple pumpkins. And like, there's so many, I can't even remember them all. There's like skulls and like, there's like everything. And it looked really nice. And so I even told her, I was, I was like, if I had to pick somebody best to show, you know, with just the overall display, because she had all of her plants and everything looked really, really nice. I was like, you would win. And she's like, oh, it's just a woman's touch and everything. And so her display, I'm not even into spiders. Like, you know, at least uh, if all this, I don't like spiders. Jumping spiders, I'm fine with. Um, scorpions, I'm fine with too. Those are like the only arachnids. Tarantulas, I don't really like. Um, and any spider that looks like a wolf spider, I hate that thing. Um, but jumping spiders are fine. And so, her, yeah, her stuff was beautiful. Um, I didn't get to walk the entire show, but yeah, there's a, there's a, a lot of really nice displays there and a lot of good breeders at this show. That's good. Shane, is there anybody you thought uh, stood out? Uh, I didn't get to walk around that much. Uh, kind of like what Jeff said. I mean, house spood and I mean, well, like here's my philosophy. People, when, when you're in, especially in ball pythons, people buy from the person cause there's like a gazillion of them there. So when I step away in my mind, I'm losing the sale. So I don't want to step away too much. So. Yeah, it is busy. <laughs> what about Shane? Is there any notable people that stuck out that had the worst setup and everything looked terrible? Who was the worst? Uh, I mean, that's the good thing about Tinley. Everyone's pretty, like, legit there, man. Yeah, it's mostly legit. Yeah, there's not too much. Although it's supposed to be captive born, and every now and then, like, I've seen those, like, uh, I know the genus names are Gonocephalus. They're those, like, Indonesian, like, water dragons. I forget what the common name is. I was like, those aren't captive born. But, you know, yeah, for the most part, most of the stuff there is good. It's a good show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Glades vends uh, Dallas. That's not with all, with all their captive-born animals that they produce. Wink. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. That, so that's really cool. All well, right. This while, is what, wait, 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 wait. While we're talking about displays, I'm now part of the crew, Jessica. So, anyways. Uh, mm -hmm. So, while we're talking about displays. So, I noticed a big difference from, like, say ball pythons to hog nose. So like with ball python guys, it's all like in our head, like we got to have these displays and stuff. But like with hog nose, everyone's like running deli cups. Why is, why, what, what, in your opinion, why is that different? Like what, what's the difference there? Um, yeah, I think it's kind of like a cooler bird thing. Um, sort of, uh, there are some hog nose people, you know, with displays or they do the cup displays. And it's probably because the hog nose fits in a cup really well. And then you can like take more animals to display in you know a smaller area and like you know if the hog nose is comfortable in an eight ounce cup that's really really good. Um, <clears throat> so I don't have any. I, I tried for like the past like ye well I haven't tried that hard. That's the problem to get you know those displays, the clear ones that open up, <clears throat> and then you mm -hmm. have the cups and it's all lit up. Um, I've been meaning to get those for a year. I've been talking with my one friend about making them and you know. He likes my stuff, and we're not good friends, but I've met him in person and hung out with him. And he likes my stuff, and he hasn't really he hasn't said anything back about my display thing. But in the meantime, that's okay. I could do shows without it. Um, but yeah, for me, I mean, if you see my display, it's you know not meant to look really pretty. It's just meant to be sufficient and what it is. It's like yeah, I got my tablecloth. I got my banners, um, and I'm like a chaotic, organized person. Um, organization actually helps with a lot of things with, uh, you know, successful breeding and really doing anything in life. Uh, so you can be a little, like, disorganized and still be good, but I call it chaotic organized. So I go to the shows, you'll see, like, a lot of times I have double stacked up cups and stuff because yeah. I have too many, uh, basically, animals to sufficiently space them out on my table. But it's okay. I just tell people to pick up and look at the stuff, um, go through them. And that actually kind of helps a little bit because then people, it's kind of like a little Easter egg hunt. Um, and people like actually picking up the cups and looking at the stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And I used to do displays. But, you know, they'd be like, you know, you got the, the, the things that slide out, you know, the tops. And 
did shit in him, and I sprayed like peroxide him, and then the, spro- the peroxide got in the seams, and the hairline cracked some of them. Mm. And then you know, um, I just I was, I was, I was like, "Fuck these displays." <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's what happened with me. Have you ever tried it with the white baskets? You know, Don vans with bat like they all look like like you know, you would like go like rustle through it for a deli and they, yeah, they yeah, can yeah, sometimes yeah. be four deep. Is are you are you talking about yeah, they're like those little like white like uh trays or like wire trays? Yeah, and then they can nest into each other when you like are driving so they don't take up as much space, but then you can like sort of sort the delis into pools. Like this is the Lavender hog nose basket or whatever. Yeah, I, I don't want to get baskets too much. You already want <laughs> okay. to get baskets. I have to have a bunch of baskets. We already have all kinds of stuff. When Andrew goes, like, dude, did you get the baskets? Or halfway there, I was like, dude, we didn't forget the fucking baskets, did we? <laughs> yeah, we did. I'm like, how are we going to organize the stuff, man? It's going to be all messed up again. All right, new concept. You're all right. We want hog nose deli cups like in a giant bin, like the DVD bins at Walmart. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just a pallet of hog nose. I know there's a good one at the bottom, you know. Mine like, isn't that bottom. bad. Mine isn't that bad. Mine's like somewhere in between. Mine's somewhere in between the baskets and the Walmart bins. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it would be fun though, just being like head down in a whole bunch of hog nose, just like, yeah. I know there's a good one. I'm missing one down there. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. That's what. I, I, sorry, I was Go gonna ahead. say that's what my mystery baskets for, or my mystery boxes are for. Yeah, I got four hog nose from Jeff at the show. Three. You don't even need hog. any baskets to. See, it works. <laughs> it works, people. You just put the cups out there, stack them up. Sometimes you don't even need to look organized. Just have like three and one, two, one. So 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 I have like I've had loose delis. I've had colubrids in. Acrylic displays like their ball pythons. I I have them in like displays. I'm I'm still not sure what is the best way, but maybe I'll just say fuck it and go Jeff mode. No baskets, raw dog it, and just stick them out on the table this time because <laughs> I have a show this weekend. Because I I don't know what makes people want to buy little things. Maybe picking them up and looking into the cup is um, is helpful. I'm sure I'm sure that helps to a degree. Um, you know, but good lights uh, so people can visually see them. Uh, yeah, presentation definitely does matter. So if you have a really beautiful display, it definitely helps. Uh, I have seen people that sell hognose solely out of the displays. And they sell really well. There is one secret to sell snakes, and I will not partake in it. And um, it's getting people to handle the snakes often. If you keep getting, yeah, uh, the, the problem with the, you already know what the problem with that is, getting a bunch of random people to hold snakes. Uh, the, the, risk, the risk of transmission, though, is extremely low in that manner especially if you're making sure that people haven't held anything and if they wash their hands the, the the risk is like basically nothing but if you do it over and over again and it also kind of sets this precedent that you aren't that careful especially with people at the show you know what i mean you got a bunch of strangers hand, yeah handling your stuff yeah i don't like i don't even like people holding the outside of the delis to be honest <laughs> Like, I don't mind it. That that uh, one's fine with me. It's okay. I wouldn't, it. I, I wouldn't be able to do it, especially at a show like Tinley, because I mean, I mean, they are higher caliber people there. You think, but I mean, that person could have touched two hundred animals before they got to you. True, true. Yeah, that's why I'm careful with touching the outside of my cups and when I'm, I, when I, you know, I'm packing animals and everything. And if anybody like um, touches anything in a weird manner or. Um, like we keep an eye on the table. That's why I like I have friends with me there because it's like keep an eye on everything. Every now and then I've had people just open up a cup and touch something. It's pretty rare, but then I just give that animal a check mark. And um, usually it's one uh, if I can, I'll just wholesale it then. <laughs> I'll go in a wholesale group. Um, mm-hmm. Or I just set it in my like uh, uh, I got like um, an in between quarantine. It's like extremely low risk and it's like not stuff I've bought from other people, like stuff I buy from other people. That's always like really high level. That stuff is like, to me is like extremely dangerous. Um, but so anyway, yeah, there's definitely concerns. Cause like the funny thing is people are getting more aware of that stuff. Cause, um, I forget what it was. If it was, um, I think it was a monitor. And they said there, that somebody was bitching. They're like, they're like, you know, about like 200 people handled this thing. And they they're like, nobody cares about biosecurity or quarantine anymore. Now, the one thing I will say on the monitor person's behalf, I'm not an expert in Veronids, but my little knowledge on them and my um, assumption on them uh, from what I know would be 
they can't really get sick unless it's like a husbandry thing. Like monitors are pretty much impervious. Like they can have worms and everything. And as long as they're healthy or, or kept well and they don't get run down, these things seem to be bulletproof to anything. I might be wrong. I don't know. But as far as I know that these, those like, cause like, I know like Komodo dragons and stuff, which are a varanid are like, like they are trying to make a uh, serum from their blood. Cause their blood has like capabilities, much like crocodilians where they don't get infections and their blood can actually destroy mm-hmm. things like hepatitis and HIV. So I, I think monitors, like I don't, I've never heard of monitors breaking out with cryptosis or coccidia or anything like that, but I could be wrong. Things can always jump hosts. Um, I would need a varanid person or at least several varanid people to like, you know, say that sounds right. It could be like the carrier though. They like, could, yeah, they could possibly carry stuff like bearded dragons are like, you know, uh, big time carriers. Like they have the adenovirus a lot, coccidia, they can have cryptosis. Uh, then a lot of times they have roundworm. Uh, bearded dragons out of anything, if somebody's like has like a disease vector species, those ones spook me the most. Um, bearded mm-hmm. dragons are always kind of nasty. Yeah, it's it's hard because I, I always want it shows to be cooler than they are, but to me, it probably isn't that nice to be like going around manhandling any animal two hundred times by biosecurity or not. I don't know. It's just it's it was too a much. Big monitor, so yeah, I imagine it was it's probably hard. But yeah, I know what you mean. Like it's been out for a long time. You know, it's kind of like we had the the you know Steve Angley brought out a big beaded lizard. And it was like really calm and, you know, it's 19 years old. And so that was the one that I had at the one show and I put it on my go-kart temporarily. And, but, you know, by the end of the day, it's like, yeah, it's like, let's not just keep handling this thing. This thing's been out for hours. And uh, mm-hmm. even though it's pretty relaxed, it, the, it, the, the one show is out for like eight hours and near the end, it started huffing a bit. So it's like, yeah, it's like, it's, it was out too long. Maybe. What, what's right. your take on, I don't know. I'm not really calling this person out. I, I can I don't even know the name. But like there was a, a person just like walking by with a big old retic. I'm not really concerned about the retic, but I'm like, God, what if that thing like mites are falling off of it or something, man? And yeah. like the head's kind of coming close to my table and I'm like, Yeah, yeah. What's this I, guy doing, man? You know? Yeah, I've I've had people do that and I like I'm like, Hey, can you back up with like that ball python that you're tr- like hovering by my table and stuff? Because yeah, uh, especially like I'd say mites are more prevalent in the Python and Boa community than uh, yeah. probably any other, you know, community. Mm-hmm. Do you treat prophylact like just to be clear, permethrin is Dr. Tahognose, everybody. <laughs> don't don't treat your hognos with permethrin. But do you treat your hognos with anything else prophylactically for external parasites specifically oh, to or from a show? The funny thing, not no, not from a show. There's really nothing you could do um unless you want to get like um diatomaceous earth or like seven dust has some chemicals in it. it's mostly diatomaceous earth i do use seven dust to spread around the edges of racks but you could use diatomaceous earth but you're gonna have to get like i don't know crazy with it and it's gonna get like powder all over your shit and your show cups are like not done you're gonna have to get new ones for the next show because once that dust gets everywhere it's like gee. but anyway uh uh from the shows no i've never gotten lights from a show honestly i hear that from people um not super often. I really feel like most of these stories, they didn't get them from shows. They just blamed the show that, you know, and that's the reason why they ended up getting mites. I've never. Oh, I've definitely got mites. mites from shows. You have? <laughs> yeah. I never have. They ended up in my quarantine, but that was like a set that I d- didn't treat because it was like early. I don't know. And I was like, oh, thanks. And there was actually like not, supposedly it wasn't from the original seller. It, those animals went to a U.S. Ark auction table to maybe get auctioned, and then I bought one of them, and then took that home and quarantined it. So my stuff didn't get it, but that animal it had like walked. Uh, well, yeah, that I mean, I mean my own animals, the animals I'm like. Oh, what, are you mean if I buy an animal from a show? Yeah. Oh, that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I buy an animal from a show for a hog nose, um, I soak them in water, um, and then I'll use like a lot of times I'll use like mineral oil. Um, the one thing is like permethrin is toxic, but before I knew that I would use Nix on hog nose. I right, that's permethrin. Yeah, but it doesn't mess with hog nose. Um, I've actually used a lot of Nix on hog nose. Never <laughs> has it ever affected them in any negative way. Um, I actually, one hog nose, cause I was young and pretty stupid. 
I got these new hog nose, and I put them right in it before not soaking them. And when they came in, the other person, they probably hadn't given the snake water for a bit. The snake started chugging the nicks. Oh, and no. Shit. And it was, that hog nose was perfectly fine. That snake never had any problems. Is it um, the concentration in Pam that, that does it? I, I don't know, but the concentration, I thought, like, in, in like, the nicks that you always use, the shampoo nicks, you dilute it, dilute it by one gallon. Um, but just a little bit of, you know, preventamite or black night, even if you use it accurately, just that small amount, and you let it air dry overnight. You know, I've seen people do that many times. And the hog nose die a lot of times, or they mm-hmm. end up severely messed up. They're insanely sensitive to it. For whatever reason, every time I use Nyx, <clears throat> but I still I won't use it now anymore. I'm spooked by it, even though I have used it many times in the past with absolutely no issues. Actually, the only time I had a mite outbreak with Hoggos, I got rid of it with Nyx. And I'd use Nyx, uh, the, you know, the shampoo slu- a solution in one gallon of water. And um, <clears throat> I would just um, put on latex gloves or nitrile gloves, and I just massage the Hoggos to get it in between the scales and go all around it. And I just let it air dry. And I do that like once a week, like two, three times. And I washed out every tub and everything. And they never came back ever again. And I did that to a ton of hog nose. And didn't have one even get neurological issues or die or anything. Um, but yeah, Nix does have permethrin in it. Uh, you know, I, I was talking about it a little bit. And that kind of came up in um, the one podcast I just recently did. And then Bree was in there for Bree Exotics. And she goes, well... She thought there may be something to do with more of the other ones being aerosol, but the one thing is, like, a lot of those, even if you let sit for a day, you know, all that stuff's gone, but it still seems to mess them up. So I don't know why permethrin and Nyx is, seems to be fine with them versus mm-hmm. these other products. Yeah, I've used Fipronil on hogs. I think Shane has two, and they tolerate that. I have not. Oh, you I, haven't done it? So... That was one of my questions since we're on this. So I've had mites twice and they've only ever affected my pythons and they never went to my hog nose. So I don't they know. Don't if like, yeah, they don't like hog nose. I, that's one thing I talked about in another podcast. They will go on hog nose, but they don't like them. And I think it is because uh, um, the hog nose have those really thick keeled scales and their skin between their scales, I think, is much thicker than the species that they're typically are able to go on. Um, you know, they, they're able to get between, but I think it's just like a thicker skin. There's something about the hoggles they don't like. If they go on the hoggles, they usually go by the ventral because, you know, that uh, skin that's exposed there is a little more vulnerable. Or to go to where there's smaller scales on the nape of the neck, and especially around the face or the crooks of the mouth where they can get easy access to the blood. So they don't, they do not like going on hoggles. They will. And I think that's one reason it's a little easier to get rid of mites on hoggles. Yeah, the mites... They kind of don't like the hog nose. They're not their um, favorite host, which is cool. You know, mm-hmm. fuck yeah. mites. <laughs> yeah, so when I had them with the pythons, I did the preventamite with the hog nose. I killed the hog nose. I only had two hog nose back then. And so I killed one of them. So I learned the lesson then. And then the next time I had a mite outbreak, I just used olive oil on the hog nose, just like prophylactically. Yeah. But I didn't see any on them. Like, I've never seen a mite on a hog nose still to this day. So... Yeah, it can happen, um, but yeah, they, they definitely they don't like them. But yeah, you could just do just wash the enclosures really well. I think if you just soaked up a hog nose with soapy water and just kept washing it every like few days, and then put yeah, just mineral oil on it or olive oil, it's like yeah, that's gonna do it. Um, all that the the mites are probably like this ain't worth it. It's like I can't do this. These hog nose are their, their skin already kind of this thing is not very palatable. This already sucks. It's hard to bite into them. This olive oil is just too much. And then get some uh, diatomaceous earth in there, and that will be even even more. Just throw it out all over the place. The mites, they're, they're done. Or you have a room full of pythons with your hog nose, and then all the mites will just go over to the pythons, and, you, and then yeah. you can front line the pythons, and you're done. Bam. Yeah, maybe. I yeah, just put all the, the pythons the other side so all the mites will come off your hog nose. Yeah. Once they're on a hog nose, I think they might stay. But the funny thing is, like, I did notice that, that they really don't like going on them. So I wonder if, like, there's been enough pe- other people to have, like, documentation of that to, like, prove that, like, hey, even if, if there are a bunch of snakes, that they will just prefer to go to those other ones than to go to hog nose snakes. That's the way it worked with me when I had them. So, I don't know. Uh, well, so anyway, I, I have my opinion. 
the other two, you guys want to chime in on pest strips? Pest strips. I know somebody who messed up um, uh, Chihuahuas with them. So if Chihuahuas can be messed up by them. I think they can mess up a hog nose. And um, I would be very leery of uh, using those. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mess with them. They mess up people all the time. Like do they? If they there's like person. Yeah, get these things out of there. Yeah, like like there's like a, a pretty strong case record of like poisoning acute acute and chronic poisoning from pest traps because people like put it in their garage but too much of the air gets into their bedroom and they go to sleep one night and wake up with like whatever you know holy shit it's actually like incredibly dangerous that's why the package says not to be used near people or animals and don't be near it for more than four hours it's supposed to be in an unoccupied space the fact that people cut it up and throw it into their snake fins drives me yeah wild <laughs> it sounds like uh intro of like south park where it says nobody should watch or view this that's kind of what the pet strips are saying should be near animals or anything the last thing you think it's going to be it shouldn't be near pests can't be near humans it's like well why the fuck else are you going to need it well, <laughs> it's supposed to be like you put it in your i don't know outdoor shed so that like your there's no black widow spiders like make a nest in your lawnmower while you're not using it that's what What's it's wrong with it, a black widow Nothing, but that's what it's like intended for. But it's super poisonous, and people are like, "Yeah, I'll just throw like ten of them in my snake room." That's funny. They're like, just "This is super it. poisonous," and I'm gonna try to kill this black widow that's not even probably gonna even possibly bite me. And here they're probably putting up something that's like causes cancer, Alzheimer's, all this shit that everybody's terrified of. Meanwhile, the little tiny bead sized spider. You know what the funny thing is? I don't like spiders, and we'd get false black widows, and um. Uh, in my dad's place, so I bred geckos with them because we we're always getting crickets loose. And we had all these false black widows, and these things were like really well fed. They had ample supply of crickets, so they were always like looked like swollen, like little marbles that had a hard time walking. And uh, I later found out that those ones are pretty damn venomous, actually. And I'd mess with them sometimes. I'd be, man, look at this pudgy little spider. I'd poke it, and I was like, oh shit, these things are actually. But you know, they're, 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 you usually gotta like squeeze them or actually like, bump into them to get them to bite you. Mm-hmm. You'll get spider powers next time, I think. So I, I used to kind of use no pest strips, like, sporadically. I never kept it in my room full time, but then uh, I got wigged out because I didn't want to hurt the hog nose since they're sensitive to chemicals. And then when I started keeping a couple tarantulas in here, I was like... But one thing I did notice, when I had the no pest strips, I would still get those little cobwebs up in the corner, so something was living in here. There was little tiny spiders that could survive the no pest strip. That's what I do now. That's good. So it wasn't that effective. <laughs> I just because there was like a big thing that came up recently where everyone was recommending them to get rid of like you know forward flies, and I'm and I just checked the medical records of all the acute and chronic poisoning of no pet. It was like countless, dozens. So like. There, there's whole states that are like, hey, this is our like no pest strip poisoning guideline. Like, hey, did you get exposed? This, like, the state of Washington has a whole spreadsheet of like how many people got poisoned this year by no pest strips. And I'm like, I'm good. Pass. Oh, I'm gonna get on a class action and use that money to buy snakes. In. <laughs> okay. <good. laughs> All right. I heard that the the fire marshal uh was not allowing the full bounty of human meat to come into the room. Junior, did you see that? Like they were like letting 10 come in and 10 go out at some point? Um, maybe I'm by the entrance, but I'm not like, like right. Wa like watching it. Um, they may have done that for a bit, but, uh, you know, I think everybody who wanted to come into the show and see stuff, well, you know, was able to. So I don't know if that stifled anything. I know the fire marshal sometimes they're like concerned about the tables and everything and so like they made us like butter table together so it was like really hard to get out from behind mine so it was like kind of cramped and uh but you know that's just like kind of part of it you know i'm like i can't really i have a good spot so i can't really complain yeah i uh my spot was kind of like the mirror image of jeff sort of i was like flopped down on the same wall but my my spot had a a, a, a secret door in and out to the other mm -hmm. set of bathrooms. So like I went out a couple times and there was a line in the hallway and then somebody told me it was something to do with the fire marshal, but I didn't get any like firsthand like knowledge, you know, cause I had my own secret door. I had like a bat cave thing. Or something. It sounds very nice. Make sure to um, solidify that spot, you know, make sure lock it in. Just be like, 
Just I never in. even knew there was a whole nother set of bathrooms down that hall. Like I was always going over by the red line in a in a RBC booth bathrooms. Yeah. But there's a whole nother set down the other hallway. <laughs> Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's uh, the the bathrooms there are pretty clean. So sometimes I was doing bathroom reviews. I'd actually review their bathroom pretty decently, although by the end of the show it's pretty messed up. Too many people. How did you do the pouch thing, Junior? Uh, the pouch with the the patches? No, no, I didn't. I have to. Robin probably thinks I'm being like, I don't know, stupid or something. I don't know. He probably thinks I'm being a dick, but. I'm like, here's the patch I want. And he goes, yeah, this is like, and so I'm like, wait a minute. You're just going to print the picture. I, and I was like, I thought maybe he's going to like modify him. But now I do have something to send to him. Actually, I'll send it to him like, like not right now, but after the podcast. And I'll send right, it to good. him. Then I'll message him. Because I use Shift Your Reptile. So Robin probably thinks I'm like doing all this on purpose and I'm being elusive. And it's really... I just get busy, and then, like, when I send him the thing, and he's like, yeah, here's the draft, I'm like, man, it's like, I don't think that'll look good on a patch. It's basically going to be a photo of my snake where I took an Instagram font and put James G. Reptile over leucistic hoggos on, like, a blue glove. I'm like, it looked kind of good, but not that, you know, it wouldn't look that good as a patch. I got a better patch. Okay. Hey, Steve Sykes' patch is looking really good, Jeff. So, I mean. Good for him. Great. Great. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> how did you think the patches went shane do you think people are people selling them or are they just giving them away what was that the... was mixed that was mixed so i did okay. see there were some patches that i wanted uh from this rant i think one of them was like a bio dude or something they had a baby yoda one but then it was like 295 and i'm like do i really do i really want to like whip out my card and i don't know man i so for me I had like, I brought like 300 of them. I ended up just giving them all away because like people wanted to run their card. Like, oh, I'll buy it. I'll pay you two bucks, three bucks, whatever. I'm like, I don't want three million charges of two and three dollars either. So I just, I just figured, screw it, man. I just gave them away. And then uh, in the future, it'll probably just be for like people that buy a snake or then if they want to buy them, maybe I'll charge them. But for the initial run, I just ended up giving them all away. Did you decide if you wanted, did you wear a fanny pack while you were there? Well, I actually uh, had pre-ordered two. So I have the red and white one because that oh. matches my colors. Every and time then, you say uh, two, you get balloons. I don't know. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I had a black one because I ordered the black one before that. Luckily, I did because I felt like a woman on Sunday. I was like, man, this red and white one. Fine. Women are awesome. That's fine. You know? So, yeah, the red and white doesn't match my kilt and my green shirt and all the stuff I was wearing on Sunday. So I had to switch over to the black one. And then I had to change all the stuff over to the black one. And I'm like, God, I feel like such a girl right now. You know, like, <laughs> I make sure I put my tampons in the in the fanny bag. You know, like, God, but it worked out because I was, I was able to match on all the days. So it worked out. No offense to girls that use tampons either. Or pads. Yeah, you need I'm to not, sometimes. Well, those fanny packs are really good. They they hold all kinds of stuff. So you got room for that and patches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, no, it, it did come in handy, though. So, like, I'll, that's where I'll be using it at is at shows. So it holds, like, you know, your change thing and, you know, like your change money. And well, it just holds all the things. Phone charger, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I always thought they were a good idea. Yeah. But here's the good thing. So there was people that came up. Wearing like some other kind of sling bag things, EDC type people. And they're like, man, I'm really happy that you guys are doing this. I've been wearing this sling bag for years. Now I got stuff I can stick on it because they'd already had the Velcro stuff on there. So, mm. boom. All right. Lisa brought it up. Uh, Junior, did you watch Brian on Blades of the Mic before last, before, before Tinley? He was talking about Tinley coming up and he said he thinks. He might have to limit hog nose vendors in five years at Tinley because he thinks too many people are signing up to be hog nose vendors. Do you yeah, see that? He went on, yeah, he did that with ball pythons and stuff. And uh, I think uh, Brian's on to something. I think it should be just one person. And it should be the first person <laughs> there the whole time. And I could probably bring enough 
So I agree with Brian. I will do that. Yes. Okay, good. Well, he was, I mean, we can talk about this in general. He was like, it's time. People can't be subletting their tables out to a ball python person over and yeah. over again and changing the species composition of the show. So we're not letting people do that anymore. And I'm going to try to control the percentage of each class of animal at the show. Do we want to like talk about that more? Uh, well, on one hand, I agree with them. And then on the other hand, depending on what I'm bringing that show, I think it's discrimination. <laughs> so, I always come with a little bit of something different, though. So uh, it's I mean, whatever. Yeah. Well, I'm I signed up as a ball to... python guy. I'm signed up as a hog nose guy. And I'm, I'm on the hook for like leopard gecko, whatever they want. I'll bring it. Whatever. Do mm -hmm. you have like, yeah, the, uh, the leopard gecko. The funny thing is, I don't think he's. I don't know if he's ever considered like limiting leopard gecko people, but that's such a mainstream pet. And a lot of times people have like mix. So, um, but Tinley, I wouldn't say he's too overrun with leopard geckos. Uh, surprisingly, there's a good amount there, but there's not too many. Um, actually there probably is, but it's not too, too many. It's just barely too many. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's an interesting thing. Um, the, the level know. of too many, you know, there's too many, <laughs> barely too many, too, there too is. many. <laughs> there is. There's definitely levels to it. Uh, Hognose, though, I mean, yeah, there are. There's, there's more like Hognose breeders, you know, trying to get, get into that show and stuff. Um, and I, yeah, the thing is, it's like the more people that have the same species get into a show, it kind of does displace people spending money. Uh, probably definitely a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I definitely like when I first when I started vending uh, Tinley with Hognose. Actually, initially, it wasn't the best because a lot of people weren't expecting them. And then also, there wasn't the permits like there are now that Scott Baylor did. So Scott Baylor has done a lot, and he made these permits, too, where you can put multiple hoggos on them now. So that's helped a lot. The big problem is, though, um, everybody is always busy and has a ton of shit to do. And a lot of people just don't want to get the permits. I was going to go on a long spiel, but obviously, anybody can get it. A lot of people, like... Like that was the big problem. Is a lot of people like they, they I got they mine. Get the permit, or yeah, or they're like their permit is expired. Like they're like, oh, I got it like ten months ago. Like ten months ago. I was like, that means you got a 2023 one. I was like, you need a 2024. And they're like, oh shucks. And then some people are like, well, where do you get the permit? I'm like, well, you just contact Joe Cass. And they're like, all right, I'll remember that. I was like, no, no, no. I was, you're doing that on purpose. I was like, you just like, I was like, here, here's his name. And if you want, just Google search this and, you know, DNR, you know, or I give them this, this whole email. I was like, very helpful. Um, but, yeah, that's the one thing. Like, you know, it, it, is it a good show for hognose? Yeah, sure. Because the hognose sell really well um, pretty much anywhere. But it, there is some challenges because a lot of people don't want to get the permit, even though it's very easy. Uh, I'm going to ask Scott. I don't know if you'll want to make any amendments to it or even if you'd call it an amendment. Um, or let's say an alteration, which would probably be an amendment um, to a document. But anyway, to where he could like expand it for like two or three years because all these friggin' people, the last show, if he was there, I was getting, I was like in a bad mood. I mean, sometimes it's not hard for me, but I'm like, come on, it's like three people in a row. And then the last guy, I lost a sale because he was buying a gecko and a hog nose. And he's, he's the one where I had to zoom in, zoom out. And I seen this thing expire, and I could tell he's kind of trying to hide it because he zoomed in and kind of cut that area out. So I was like, I gotta refund you. So then I sent a refund on his, you know, credit card, and then I was like, man, I was like, yeah, you know, <clears throat> just like renew it. I was like, it's very easy, and it takes five minutes. And you can tell he's irritated. So that way, when he gets his permit, he'll definitely buy from somebody else because you'll be like, man, that guy was kind of a dick. When I, <laughs> he'll probably you'll get it from Shane. Get it from Shane, man. <laughs> I'm a lot more forgiving than Jeff. He I'm wanted, way more I mean, forgiving. I'm forgiving, but like, you know, I'm very, but I'm very, I'm just like, you know, I'm just like really, um, I'm just myself. You know, I'm not going to hide it. I'm like, come on. I'm like the third person. I'm like, look at this guy. I was like, everybody's like, I was like we need to get to like, you need to find a way to get these people. There's just like, submit would the it, permits. Would a big show in another state do better that has no, like, could the new hognose mecca be like the Georgia reptile nation or something? Like no permits, nobody gives a fuck. 
blast Bob him out Vu, the door. Bob Vu is actually talking about, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it. I already did, just kind of now. Um, but he's, I guess, putting on a big show um, towards the end of this year, and uh, it's going to be in Georgia. And he actually has already invited me. He's like, because I told him that he had a ball python. is really cool. I was like, that ball python is really cool. And he's like, thanks. And he goes, by the way, he got a reptile show. And I was like, That's cool. Guy? Yeah. And so, yeah, it sounds like, and Bob's like um, a very personable, you know, person. And that's like, I like Bob a lot. Cause I like his antics and his memes and everything. And so um, I, I think he'll do a good job putting on a show. And so, yeah, Georgia wouldn't be a bad, you know, location, uh, probably like the Atlanta area because it's not too far from like Nashville. Um, mm -hmm. It's a pretty decent sized metropolis. And if it, this thing is, the bigger the show is, that's the thing with like a little bit of power of Tinley because Tinley is in a pretty good location because Indiana and Michigan aren't too far and Wisconsin's right there too. And then you get people from Minnesota because there's not any really massive expos in the area. So you have this, uh, you know, people coming together. And But that's one reason why I like California. California shows are really good. So uh, I'd say Pomona is like a really good spot for, you know, shows and stuff. Uh, I don't really like telling people like, hey, this is the best show you can go to because you get like a ton of hogs breeders going there. They'll be like, oh, I wonder why it's not as good. I'm like, I wonder why 30 of us showed up. I think that everyone way. should go to Georgia with their hog nose. I'll be at Timley, though, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Have you thought about doing the the Colubrid Fest that they're thinking about trying to plan? Where is that? Well, it's like Dr. Zach Loveman and Clint, they're like oh, picking locations. So they sent out a survey, and some of them could, they could be anywhere. But it'd be like an only colubrid show, colubrid and colubroid, you know, show, hypothetically. Maybe check it out. I hope I it's in Texas, out. but that's selfish, right? <laughs> so I don't have to go as far. And the hog permit in Texas for a keeper isn't that hard to get. They can go to Walmart and get it. Can I be the one ball python guy vending at the colubrid show? That'd be really <laughs> cool for me. You should would... allow at least a few, like, you know you know, Bowood's in there. I, mean, I kind of think it's like a little... It might be more like Carpet Fest, where it's like some vending, but then talks. Or Okay. Like like a more structured... I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. But that that was the vibe I got. You know how much talking goes on at Tinley? There's a lot of talking there, man. I don't know. Well, like... Tinley... I mean, did they have talks before the show on Thursday this time? Or did they not do it? Uh, I'm just saying during the show, man. And oh, they're like talking. Copper, Chris from Copperhead said that so there was always somebody talking at my table. Chris, just interrupt them next time. I probably need a, a way out for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Bob's show is a maybe a show me show. September 2024. Location to be announced. Leviathan is helping out with digital ads for Bob's show. Oh, cool. Atlanta in September, besting around 50K to promote. Oh, Lord. Saturday is educational panels, and Sunday is sale day. That's cool. I'm in. I'm into anything that's, like, trying to make shows, I don't know, elevated in any way you can. <laughs> like, I'm doing, this is a good Hogner show, but I did decide to do the Denver All-American Reptile and Plant show. It just feels like they're trying. You know what I mean? I don't know what it takes, but just try. Try to try to make it good. Promote the crap out of it. Get a big door. Make it worth everybody's time to be there. Even somebody like who sells corn sticks. <laughs> That's all I want. Oh, fuck. All right. Um, yeah. If the Clubert Fest is in Texas, that would be fun for me. But who knows? So Tenley was good, I think. We all agree it was good. I think uh, the the state of our economy outside of the reptiles uh, stifled a little bit of the sales is my theory on that. The, the attendance was good. Not as much money flowed my way as the other shows, but I still did all right. That's my, my Tenley in a nutshell. Uh, the one thing I was like, I remember like Daytona uh, being, you know, it was like the biggest, you know, 
that was the show to be at. Mm-hmm. And it kept getting larger and larger. And at one point, the show can only get so large where it actually starts kind of being a negative because there's just too much. Um, and Tinley, I think, is like kind of like, well, they're not expanding it anymore. And so I think it's like, it's definitely a little large. Um, and the, the one thing is, too, it's like, 2021 that's when sales in 2022 like so we're kind of still coming down from that like gigantic like uh influx of um surplus money and all these new people flooding into the you know hobby and everything so uh you know i I expect some of these like shows to be definitely you know a little slower partially due to that uh but yeah i mean the thing is even like certain good shows like you know there's there's gonna be some um variability and, you know, even if a show isn't that great, um, you know, especially if, it, let's say, if it's like Tinley and it's like March isn't that great, you know, still give October a chance. And just like Salt Lake City, if March wasn't that great, try October or vice versa. And, uh, yeah, so let's give a show like, you know, definitely a few shots. But a lot of it has to do, too, with like, like say, Tinley, like, you know, there's a lot of people, I think, come out to that show and they're just happy if that pays for their weekend and stuff and, you know, make maybe just a little bit extra money because they just want to come and hang out or see the show. Um, you know, it's definitely nice to make make money, but, you know, everybody's goals are different. Mm-hmm. And then it also depends where you're starting at and everything or where you've been. Junior, if you were going to lose money at any show, which show would it be? Like, like if you if you didn't mind losing money. Tinley, because it's like a, I, I could drive, I drive to Tinley like a little over five hours. It's a close show for me. <laughs> so like, yeah, when I go to that show and it's like, you know, for me, it's actually a very inexpensive show to do. Um, you'd think it's an expensive one. I mean, the tables are expensive, but that's the biggest expense for me. You know, the gas isn't that much. And, um, you know, hotel rooms, usually I split them with one of my friends and, uh, you know, cause we're, we're all hang out in the rooms and play like board games and do shit like that anyway. So. Yeah, it's like um, you know, very inexpensive show for me to do. So like when I see other people and they're they're you know, they have to fly in and stuff. I'm like you know, I'm like oh yeah, I do that too, but I have to do that for other shows. Um, you know, but yeah, if I had to like, I don't want to give like an answer like my local show because that's like it's one day and it's you know, I know you're meaning more of like a big show. So yeah, like Tinley because of that. Um, if you're if you want to base it on just like having fun or whatever. Um, maybe you want to act like further, you know, like from me, just because of the different environment. Um, like I like going to Pomona cause there's a lot of cool people there. Um, my friend Joe Kovacs there and he's actually really good friends with Dale from uh, Tamura design. So, um, I got to go over there and, you know, so it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of times it's the people, you know, that, you know, and you, you're hanging out with. I'm not, I, I'm definitely, I like, uh, being social um i really like socializing with people but when it comes to like accosting or instigating like social like settings like when i went down to like a tinley in the lobby and there's like 150 people down there in the bar and stuff i looked around and i was like eh, i don't really want to be down here so then we walked out and um and then we went to the weight room and then that was a lot of fun because then dave uh, met up with us and then we we're throwing medicine balls at each other <laughs> oh jennifer thank you for the super chat and Andrew, yeah, please hit like and subscribe for uh, more content about hog noses and whatever I feel like talking about. Do so you think the bar is like too much? Like I'm a little, I, I could feel my social anxiety like take up a notch. It, like 150 people in a bar. And you're like, oh, I'm going to slide in here and talk to people in a loud room that most of them are drunk. Well, it's, um, there's like tables and then I, I was like, I say there's probably r- roughly 120, 150 between the lobby and the whole bar area. So it was kind of spread out, um, you know, there may not have been quite, but it, there's, there's a lot of people. I mean, there had to be a, like minimum a hundred, I'd say it's like 120 plus with the lobby and the bar combined. But, um, it, when it was like, you know, at full, like not full capacity, but you know, when the majority of the people were down there, mm-hmm. is it mostly, okay. Is the bar hangout culture or the vendor culture? Like dominated by ball python people, and the rest of them run away. Like I, um, it's something I've always been like curious I don't about. Stay down there that long ever. Um, like I never really stayed down. Like every now and then I do. Like the last, the one time I stayed down there, and um, there was a few people 
that were very drunk and they're expressing how much they love a lot of people. And I'm like, yeah, these people are pretty hammered. And, um, you know, they were like frog people and cooler bridge people and gecko people. And so oh, that's good. So it's like a pretty healthy mix. Good. Cause like I'm, I'm an everything people. So a lot of times I'm like, I don't know who to go to dinner with a sort of analysis paralysis. Yeah. You know, I'm like, but I'm a boa person in my heart. But I, I don't, I don't know. But I'm vending a lot of ball python, so I go to a ball, dinner with the ball python people, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. It's like a <laughs> existential crisis every time. I got to make my own people. My take on the bar is, yeah, it's too much. From a person that doesn't drink, and then when I get into a bar setting, I'm I like, I get in a different frame of mind, and I'm ready with the hair trigger, and I'm like, fuck this, I'm leaving before something bad happens because somebody's <laughs> gonna say something stupid, and I ain't putting up with shit at a bar, you know. <laughs> You're really anticipating some very precise, um, like circumstance there, Shane. Yeah. <laughs> so no, it's not because I don't like ball python people. It's just I don't know. You know what's fun? Going out for Chicago pizza when you're in that area. That's what I like. That's fun. Or go to the weight room and then they got medicine balls in it. <laughs> Do people DoorDash or Uber in? food all day long how do y'all feed yourselves or do you go buy the 15 dollar nachos or whatever i'm bringing both. snacks snacks all right yeah i bring in snacks and then a lot of times i'm like you know i eat i eat a breakfast and then like things are kind of busy and stuff and so usually i eat a snack here or there or sometimes like you know this this show i didn't eat eat as much as i normally do but then um when we went out to the restaurants afterwards i was eating quite a bit I almost got, um, I was going to get, I was like, I can't eat it all. I wanted to get like a giant steak to be like an idiot. And I'm going to try to eat the whole thing, but I didn't do that. So how many sales, and this is for both of you, are pre-sales versus Friday setup sales versus Saturday primetime sales versus Sunday end of the day, somebody wandered in and got something random sales. Like how, how does, how did your Tinley break those down? Um, I, had, I had three pre-sales. But surprisingly, this Tinley, Tinley, those pre-sales weren't for people picking them up at Tinley. They actually seen that I was going to Tinley and said they bought them and had me ship them before I took them to Tinley. So oh, okay. Was, it That's forced me to sell. And then uh, Saturday was, was, my, was my higher end stuff. And then Sunday afternoon was just random people walking by paying with cash for like pet level snakes. And I was like, yep, I got more. Come on. And that's how my, my Tinley went. I've done a lot of Tinley, so there's usually always, um, you know, some Friday sales if you have the animals, like, set out. Um, you know, and sometimes they're the slowest. Like, this show, like, I sold only a couple animals on Friday. I mean, Friday for me is, like, short because, like, I arrived at, like, 2 p.m. And I think they close at, like, 7 or something like that. And you got to, you know, get the tablecloths. You got to get everything else set up. Um, you know, then people want to come over and talk. And, uh pre-sales this time i had a little more pre-sales i think that i normally do actually and uh yeah then like saturday sales were pretty you know steady they're kind of like you know i'd say pretty average uh, a little spaced out sunday um was a little picked up a little more on geckos um and then sunday like at the close yeah there's a there was um a few sales made you know some people like to be like last minute and uh, then they're trying to look for a deal and they're like, Oh, what do you have that? You know, is that it's like this or whatever. And sometimes I deal with those people. Sometimes they don't depending on, you know, what the context is. Did anybody try to trade you a uh, China white for a hog nose? China you don't white. have, you say China white. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Mean? So Richard says a vendor offered cocaine to a group of women in exchange for seeing their tatas. He was removed from the bar, thrown out, for the show on Sunday morning. So a vendor did it. I was wondering if someone had offered you some cocaine for hog nose uh, mm -hmm. also. So cocaine's also called China White? It's the good stuff. Oh, really? I never heard that. Um, nobody's ever. Sorry. I think people, like, <laughs> I think people look at me. And like, I mean, the one time I was in Vegas, I was offered cocaine. And it's, you know, but I was like, no. And um, no, nobody's really ever offering me drugs too much. Like marijuana sometimes. That's the only thing. I, I've never actually seen cocaine at any of these shows. I have seen shrooms before. The one guy's like, goes to you, he goes, you want to take some shrooms? I was like, nah, I was like, I'll look at them, though. And I picked one up. I was like, huh, that's interesting looking. I was like, oh. 
you know, really need to take anything. Right. It's probably already a lot of stuff going on anyway. There's you already know? enough shit going on. There's already, <laughs> like, you know, I, I take all kinds of supplements. Um, yeah, the shrimps would probably, like, tear up your, your gut even worse, you know. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'll take that vendor's booth that got kicked out, though. I'm just putting that out there. Did he get kicked out for trying to, like, for trying to... <laughs> That's what so, Richard said. Like, was he permanently kicked out forever? Richard, type it in. Wait, is that the whole transaction? I'll give you cocaine if you show me your boobs. It's like a pretty lame transaction. It's like, why don't you just keep your cocaine? Right. It's not like you can't see boobs on the internet, except for in Texas, because <laughs> they made Pornhub mad. <laughs> uh, they'll never make Pornhub mad, by the way, because uh, they'll, they'll just leave. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, is China white heroin? Sorry. All my drug facts are from Stephen King books, so I could have messed it up. China white, yeah, because that sounds like it'd be a, a, a maybe. That kind of I thought it was cocaine. Is it, like, it bad? So I don't know. Cocaine coming from like South America, you know. Well, I think it's the, the color because it's like the brown if it's not pure. And so the whiter it gets, uh, the better of a yeah, bump maybe. you get. I don't maybe. know. Somebody I, Google search this. <laughs> <laughs> the feds will know. Locality information on this cocaine that we're talking about. That, yeah, it's going to be a new name for a wharf now. Kevin McCurley will do it because he has all that kind of stuff, like name like that, like China White. Uh, Richard says he believes he was banned for life. So the table's open, Shane, if you want to like dip in there. and <laughs> Man, I, need to, I need to do some messaging. Do you think something's missing from the show? either of you like a, a vendor or a class of animal or something that you're like damn why doesn't that show up and sell or whatever or do you think it's we're covered we got the whole hobby i i'm, I'm thinking shane if you want to say something well from the limited runs i did away from my table i really didn't see too many boas I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Jeff, but like my neighbor right next to me had a couple and then there was like Vin. I never, I mean, yeah, I didn't, there's a whole bunch of different gecko things everywhere. And then a few hog nose. On that wall that's, um, you know, against like, like the, the, the back, like where it's like the glass, um, the glass wall there. Yeah. Um, or with the windows there, the big window frame, uh, they, there was somebody there that had some really nice bows. They had some blood boas that were pretty nice looking. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to think of stuff. So like, I mean, there's like knobtails, there's leechianus, um, you know, bolens, pythons. That's not something anybody ever has a lot of ever. But I have seen bolens pop up here and there. I don't know. It seems like a lot of stuff's pretty covered at Tinley. And that's like kind of one reason why it gets kind of like a reputation of being like a really good show. Because, I mean, there is a lot of stuff there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it'd be cool if they allowed, like, heloderma there, but, you know, you can't have those there, so. Do you, I guess, like, the question is, like, I don't even know what percent of things there should be. Like, if there are three or two BOA vendors, maybe that is the correct amount for that show, for, like, the demand. Because if you did 30, that might be too much or Yeah, whatever. like, yeah, I feel like you have four or five or six. But then there's some people that have a mix of stuff. Like, I know Dylan, I think his, um, his business name is, like, CBN Exotics. Um, might be off a letter there. But he has, like, a, an array. He has, like, you know, different pythons. And I, I think he has, like, a few boas, too. But uh, then I see, like, I like Juggernaut's table a lot. He has some very beautiful blood pythons. Yeah. Um, you know, there's monitor people there. I mean, it's a pretty nice, even show. It's like, I'd say you'd have a, like, there's somebody there with garters. Uh, I'd say it's pretty hard to go there and, like, you know, not find what you're looking for, or at least close to it. It's pretty good. Yeah, like, Met- Metazotics had an array of colubrids and stuff. I was over checking out his table for a minute. I mean, I don't, like, like Jeff said, there's a pretty, there's a good amount of different species there. Would either of you vend any other NARBC show, or do you already, uh, Jeff? I have. And I tried to get into Texas last year, and he's like, it's all sold out. I was thinking about trying to ask now, like two weeks or three weeks before the show. Um, and they'll probably be like, no, we're sold out. 
and that's always kind of like annoying to me even though it's like very short notice <laughs> because the one thing is like like daytona they want you to know like like a year in advance almost and i'm like who the fuck knows what they're going to be doing in a year you know that's a long time out but i do sign up for the next tinley booth the next time but you know it's not quite a year it's like like six seven months apart uh but yeah i mean the 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 uh arlington slash dallas um they have schaumburg but schaumburg is kind of like you know near tinley and it's um you know it's basically like tinley 2.0 what i'd imagine i I don't you know i haven't been there yet and i don't want to make any like derogatory remarks about it i mean it's, i'm sure it's a fine show i'm sure it's good narbc you know brian and bob put on a hell of a good show you can't argue that because they they have tinley under their belt and um you know yeah so i mean as long as it's like a show's like here's the one thing i can only do so many reptile shows so that's what it's really about with me and then sometimes i'll go to certain areas like i'm going to sacramento sacramento is like it's a good show um it's definitely not the best but i want to see some redwood trees those things are pretty nice you guys mm-hmm. should go see some redwood trees. So that's the thing. Reptile show, redwood trees. I'm from California, Jeff. I've seen plenty. Oh, yeah. Of you have? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I, 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 I am, I am open to. I'm open to vending another NARBC if that gets me my Tinley spot. That's where I'm at with it. Yeah, like July, Schaumburg would be like peak. It depends on when you brewmate, but it could be peak colubrid baby time. So it could be the new colubrid in the RBC, hypothetically. Um, so that's why, like, maybe that one works. Because St. Louis is kind of weird <laughs> to me. Like, right after October Tinley. That's right. why I'm like, man, I can't. I can't. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, St. Louis is kind of like, I, I feel like Tinley already pulled people from St. Louis. Because it's really not that far. So I think St. Louis is like kind of, cl- I mean, obviously Schaumburg is closer, but Schaumburg though is a pretty big time span between the tin. It's like, you know, it's like kind of smack in the middle. So I think Schaumburg mm-hmm. is like, you know, probably okay. Um, but you know, Tinley is the most, you know, is the most well known. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd like to do uh, Dallas Arlington. I-, I have to get down to Texas. You should have asked him. I think he had like a hundred extra tables when they went to the new. Really? Yeah, and so like I, I even I got a table. <laughs> um, maybe I'll ask. Let me look. Yeah, at I'm, he might even like make an exemption for you. I got so many shows. You'd think. Um, you know, sometimes I go to these shows and I'll be like, "Can I get a table?" And I'll be like, "Who are you?" Um, <laughs> I got hog nose. I mean, they're kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I got uh, actually I got but I the show I'm doing next is uh, Billings, Montana, which is like middle of nowhere, and that's a big even- sky. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So if you have you live close enough to Billings, um, and you want to see, I'll be there in like what is it like nine days. Uh, but yeah, I was even I was talking to the dude that runs it. He was at Tinley, and he's like talking to me, and him and his friend were like, you know, say, hey, would you go out to Billings? I was like, yeah, maybe. Um, I was like, I'd have to fly there, of course. And they're like, well, if you do, they're like, we'll help you and stuff. And I was like, all right. I was like, let me think about it. I was like, sounds kind of because I, I did that with one show i can't remember what show uh but sometimes i like doing that like it'll be like one or two weeks notice and i'll be like well you know if i cram everything i need to do and get everything you know caught up and taken care of and i like i can do it in this time frame i kind of like to do those shows i like to do like little challenges like that like actually when i when i do phoenix i was joking with my friends i, like, I really want to fly out of phoenix saturday night and have my girlfriend Crystal manage Phoenix Sunday, and so I could be at Hillsboro on Sunday. But that's just kind of stupid, <laughs> so I'm not going to do it. What's the like rubric? Like, do you need a certain number of people to the door previously, or certain? Not really. Salt Lake population really density. That. Yeah, Salt Lake doesn't really get that many people, and I'll still do it. And I like Guy, the dude that runs it. Him and his wife are very nice, and it's a very, uh, it's a very clean show. Um, Clint goes there. Uh, there's some actually pretty cool stuff there. I like that venue a lot. And, you know, sometimes it's not like, like even like Sacramento, um, 
you know, if I don't make that much, I'm, I get to see some redwood trees. So, you know, and then Salt Lake, I guess I get to see a salty lake. I actually have never gone there, but you know, I, I like the area. Salt Lake's really beautiful just to be, cause the mountains are like right, like butted up against the city. Yeah, so even while you're driving that. around, you get mountains for fun. You can go to Park City while you're there in Salt Lake. What's there? That's like, right. it's like where you can go like inner tubing in the snow and stuff. It's okay. like a little resort oh. town. Last time, and I'm going to do it this time. Last time I went to Salt Lake, I went herping with uh, Joel Reed. That was cool. And so we, um, yeah, so we're going to do that. And he had his cat with him, and his cat would follow us everywhere. And so yeah, <laughs> That's we had awesome. Yeah, and we, you know, we found some, um, man, it was some, uh, I don't, I can't remember what species of skink we were finding. Um, but yeah, we were looking for um, uh, what's out there. I'm trying to think of that rattlesnake there um they're a bigger species they're not like southern pacific i don't know i'm not really good with my you know crotalis so a anyway but you know sometimes it's just like you know if you know the right people and stuff like pomona i love that because of the people i know in that area um pl i've actually met some very nice people there i actually have like several friends there and actually i just made a new friend there and uh um she's really cool and supportive and she's <laughs> always finding other people that get into hognos and um and then like um and i love jeff that runs the pac and wrs shows here's one way to get me out to a show too i asked jeff i was like can i drive my go-kart there he goes yeah go ahead and he goes do whatever you want and so that was like because i always wanted to like we always joke around like like some of these shows like like daytona when it was like really big and then at one point where it's kind of like not doing as good there was enough space, everybody would say, where you could drive a car down the aisleways. Mm -hmm. And so I was, like, I was like, man, this place would look good to drive a go-kart in. And so I never thought I'd ever drive a go-kart that, you know, and I don't even know what the hell I might talk about. Anyway, yeah, the, there's a lot of good shows out there. <laughs> Did you buy the go-kart there? Drive it there and then leave it with your friend and fly away? Or are you just toting this go-kart around with um, you? Um well, I got a deal on the one, and it had free shipping, so I had it. I was like, "Well, I could use a second go kart." And I was maybe I'll auction <laughs> one off. But so far, I've been greedy. I haven't auctioned one off. I don't know if I will. I was like, "Man, I like these things. Maybe I will, because I'll probably get another one. I, I eventually will auction one off." And I got the U.S. Arc stickers on them. But yeah, I just had it shipped to my friend's brewery and stuff. And so then I got to drive around his brewery and everything, and um, that was cool. And uh, then, yeah, I shipped that to Seattle. Uh, I'm not going to do it too much because it is a, it is expensive, <laughs> not surprisingly, to ship a 130-pound go-kart air mm -hmm. cargo everywhere. You can just leave them in, in storage units across the country. So whenever you need to deploy a go-kart. Yeah. <laughs> could do that. Yeah. could do that. Jennifer says uh, China White is heroin and Columbia White is coke. I'm so sorry. I was wrong. Uh with the uh, yeah you were caught away from each other there. yeah sorry <laughs> yeah you gotta get better identified yeah i gotta do more coke or, and hair, heroin to fully lock in the knowledge base and then lisa asked if it was veritas uh crotus veritas one of the subspecies it well hmm, i don't know I, again i don't know my crotal is that well so um it may be that species but i don't know what veritas is <laughs> i don't know what the <laughs> Uh, if it, there's if a bunch of subspecies. Utah, Utah and it, it's a big one. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, do you do Daytona anymore, or would you do Daytona anymore? Uh, I'm trying to get in there this year. Um, I, I can. Uh, I guess I, I'm going to send in my buddy tomorrow. I got. I'm, I'm getting put in this, this the 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 second room. He doesn't care that I used to go there all the time, um, but that's fine. He has his rules. So Wayne's still he's a he's a good guy, and he um, he puts on a good show, and he's been doing it for a long time. And uh, uh, yeah, I used to do that show. Um, the first time I ever went there, I was fifteen, but it was just a shop, and I bought some hog. I bought hogs from Craig Trumbauer, um, and I really loved those days because there was a lot of like wild caught and captive hatched or like first generation from wild caught hog that was there and so you've seen a lot of these little interesting like variations and wild types and um you know i kind of missed that part and uh but then by the time of, yeah by the next year my dad and i were already vending uh daytona and then uh my dad and i we stopped like you know breeding 
geckos together right around when I was like 24. And, um, and I still did Daytona up until I was like 30 and I haven't been back. So I haven't been back there in like six years. It'd be interesting to see what it's like. I, I might like visit Daytona. I don't think I ever want to bend. It's really it's a good far. hangout area too. I mean, it's like a lot of people go there to hang out. And so that's the thing. So I'd like, I'm not going to go down there just to hang out. So I like, I'll do both. I'll bend. And if it's like not that great of a show, I don't really care because you know, tax right off. And then also I get to hang out. What's the new morph? He's doing reptile talks and premiering a new morph. Well, that's the whole point of the reptile talks is I'm premiering a new morph there. I can't talk about it. <laughs> I was being facetious. No, tell us about that. And then we'll do like a last thoughts. Wait a second. Wait, wait. Time out. Time out. Jessica talks about going to all these shows all over the United States, but have you heard her mention that she's going to Tinley? No. Why not? You got a beef with Tinley? What's going no, on? No, it's a 13 hour drive. So I have to be like, I don't know. That's not bad. 13 hours is okay. Yeah, I can, I can do it. Like I, I need a table to want to, to vent Tinley. Cause I don't, besides like hoarding the Zirkles rat snakes, I don't know what, what would be there for me. Cause I need to sell something to make up for like probably $2,000 of expense. Is that weird? But Daytona, I could go to the beach. I could go herping way hard and not even do the show. Just go to the show for a minute and be like, bye, I'm going to leave to <laughs> drive down the coast. Go catch berms in the wild and stuff? I, I, I just want to see, like, I don't know, like the phenotype change of, like, because you can actually road cruise properly in the in Florida on, like, you know, north of the Mason-Dixon line because they're out at night. So you can just drive around at night for a week straight and go further and further south. I don't know. would not that sound fun? Way more fun than <laughs> defending a reptile show. It does sound pretty fun. Mm-hmm. I even like picked out my hotel like on the edge of like 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 the like a western sub suburb of Miami, like right on the edge of like Alligator Alley and like a swamp. You just get a hotel and you just keep driving every night. Drive for five or six hours wherever. Go down the keys in the middle of the night. And wouldn't that be way more fun? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like the warm weather. I really, I, I like, you know, tropical climates and stuff. So, yeah, that's like one thing I really do like going to, like, Daytona. And, you know, you know, you can even fish. Um, yeah, fishing and herping. Mm -hmm. um, it just sounds fun. I do, if if I got a Tenley table, I did send an email. I'm like, I don't breed ball pythons. That was a lie. But I was like, I will never bring a ball python there if I get a table. But if I don't get a table, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Everybody else is like, yes, Daytona. There's so much stuff to do. So many activities in Florida. See, catch some berms. Screw <laughs> the beach. Go catch some berms. Yeah, yeah. I don't look, I'm not into beaches anyway. Berms. Uh, I think you need to drive like about four hours, though, at least, though, from Daytona. That's the one thing. I mean, if you're staying in that area, yeah, you can have time. But, yeah, the Everglades are kind of like about four. Right. I guess what I would do hypothetically is like go to the show for a day or maybe even it, it'd be like the way the drive home, but do like run around in South Florida for a couple days, hit the show and then drive home. I don't know. on Sunday or something. So like you start the, the, the party on Wednesday or Tuesday herp and have fun. And just like your last hurrah is to go by the show and say, hi, maybe get a something, pick something up. That's what I was thinking of doing. That sounds, like, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> uh, why support a state that hates your hobby industry? I don't know, because it's full of nice corn snakes. I definitely don't like the Florida's regulations that are, you know, seem to be just uh, extreme bureaucratic nonsense that's kind of aimed to, like, hurt a hobby versus actually protect animals mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. But, um... That's your government money at work. You got to love your government. That's what I was just doing is paying taxes. You know, that's why a lot of people are like, what do you think? Sometimes I tell people that they're, what do you do for a living? I say, I work for the government. And that's where most of my money goes. So I work for the government. I breed hog nose snakes for the government and uh, leopard geckos. Oh, great. How do I get that job? <laughs> 
All right. Final thoughts on spring Tenley 2023. Will you be vending or attending again? Uh, it's sort of a dumb question for you. Probably. Guys. <laughs> Probably. All right. Everybody's in. Uh, I already have my time off work planned for October. So. But you don't technically have a table unless you. I will have. I will find something. I will be at Tenley on Sunday. You will be table. in the parking lot defrosting. Hog knows <laughs> the part. Okay. I, I will be there. I just think it and it'll happen. Okay, good. All right. All right. Let's then we did it. I think. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the super chats. We had Jennifer, Andrew. We learned about cocaine and heroin tonight. We've covered it all. Let's uh, say bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.